In this video, I'm going to, to talk about two subjects that actually are one in the same, but um, I've realized how they merge together um, in a way that is, well, horrifying. And that is appropriate because the subject is horror. Um, and I wanted to talk about how I have reevaluated the whole genre of horror. Um, you all know that, I mean, you've heard me talk about analog horror before and, uh, my, my, uh, fondness for it, uh, as a genre, as a sort of homemade genre, you know, you know, people, creative people, you know, uh, just using their talents, uh, doing, working from home, uh, you know, not having to work through studios or go to film school or anything, but just, just, just uh, churning out this this material that's really uh, a lot of it's really um, really good, um, but it is you know a particular brand of the genre uh, called horror, and I want to merge my my discussion of horror with something that uh, one of you requested from me. Now, this is a request I got from one person. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name right now. I don't remember the name of the person who requested this. But, uh, you know, I always read my comments, which isn't, I, doesn't, I don't get that many comments. So I'm not really saying, you know, I'm not really saying, oh, I'm such a cool guy, I read all my comments. Because, you know, it's not like I'm PewDiePie up here getting, you know, millions of comments a day. <laughs> but um, um, anyway, one of you asked if I could talk about the Franklin scandal. And... Uh, how that was a, such a formative thing for me. And the thing is, I feel like I've talked about this before, and I, I know I have talked about this before. I, and I, I know that I've, I've, I've even talked about it, I think I talked about it on a couple of other podcasts. Um, so for those of you who are just like, oh, no wiki, again, again with the Franklin scandal, come on. But um, so if, if that's... If that's how you feel, I understand, and, and you don't have to watch the rest of this video. But I, um, I, I did want to honor this one person's request, and also just because I think most of what I had to say about the Franklin scandal is now lost. It's gone. It's part of the, the cache of uh, videos, or cache. I don't know how you say it, cache or cache of videos. The, the bunch of videos that I recorded uh, uh, up through um, late 2020 that, that were eventually just nukes by YouTube, and I had to start all over. Um, um, am I still bitter about that? You bet, you bet your ass I am. Do I hate YouTube? You bet your ass I do. Um, am I still using it? Yes, I'm still using it, but... As my uh, backup channel will tell you, YouTube is my whore. I'm using it for my own purposes. Me using YouTube does not mean that I endorse it. So I think most of the things about the Franklin scandal are now gone. Most of the things that I recorded on my own channel concerning the Franklin scandal are now gone. Uh, I remember, I think I did a couple of videos where I talk about it. Um, and there, there is... Uh, uh, there are a couple uh, videos that I did, maybe it was just one video that I did when I was in Omaha, Nebraska, at the site of the uh, uh, infamous um, uh, savings and loan place that was owned by Larry King. Not that Larry King. Uh, not the one you're thinking of. But uh, the one who's involved with the Franklin scandal. And I... I, uh, I did a walk and talk, you know, where I was picturing myself walking around this, this now deserted, uh, uh site where apparently this great evil was, uh, taking root. Um, so, so I want to talk about two things at the same time. Uh, and they're really, again, one subject, horror and how, uh, how I've grown to see horror very differently than I used to see it. And the Franklin scandal, which is, which is a real life horror, and that kind of fits in with my, my overall uh, reappraisal of horror as a genre, 
is because there is so much horror that is unfortunately true to life. Um, and I'm not just talking about the scary things, you know, in life that we all have to face naturally. I mean, you know, the horror of, of death and disease and all, the, all those sorts of things. Um, I'm talking about the uh, horror of, well, just to put it in a shorthand, man's inhumanity to man. Um, you know, the, the, and the, um, the, the, the depravity of the powers that be, uh, when you really look at them closely, um, and you see, see them for, for who or what they really are. Um, so I grew up in the seventies and eighties. I did. Well, I, I grew up, I mean, I was, I became more or less sentient in the 80s. In the 70s, I was just running around having a good time uh, doing little boy things. Um, but in the 80s, you know, I became pop culture aware. And uh, that was the time when horror was, uh, you know, was a real, in a real resurgence, I suppose, pop, pop culturally speaking. You know, you had the magazine Fangoria. Uh, which I, I didn't subscribe to, but it was, I think it was put out by the same people who put out Starlog magazine, which I did subscribe to. Um, I was, I was a fan of science fiction. I was not a fan of horror back then, you know, unlike most teenagers, uh, and, and I became a teenager in the eighties, eventually in, uh, 1984. Um, but, uh, unlike most preteens and teens, you know, and teens who wanted to be cool and stuff, you know, I really had no interest in all the schlocky, uh, horror, um, uh, vehicles, you know, uh, cinematic, uh, franchises that were everywhere in the eighties, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, what was the other one? Um, Ugh. Halloween, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, that the the Halloween went went beyond uh, the eighties. Um, I guess those were the big three, but of course there were all sorts of copycats and and everything. And you know the the, the, the what's what it was what was called the slasher film, uh, uh, the 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 golden age of the slasher movie. Um, it always just, just kind of struck me as boring as a premise. Like, uh, it didn't, uh, you know, it seemed very formulaic and, uh, um, I still, I still don't have much of a, uh, an interest in going back and watching any of those movies just because it just doesn't seem, it just seems, um, like, you know, okay, there's a killer on the loose and he's killing these kids or, you know, one by one, and they're all dying, and, and you know, it's just, I, I don't know, it just doesn't seem all that interesting. But I also had a dislike of horror, because my sense of horror at the time was that it was sort of something that was supposed to leave you feeling, um, feeling bad, you know, leave you, uh, feeling like, um, you know, you're, you're in danger, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're unempowered, you can't defend yourself, the bad guys are going to come and get you. Um, you know, that was a very against my whole aesthetic. I was, I was a Dudley Do-Right, you know, uh, I had the Dudley Do-Right kind of mentality. I liked movies and books that were about fighting, you know, good versus evil. Um, and not, not ones that s focused on evil and said evil's gonna win you know basically um and didn't really uh, didn't really go into much detail about about uh, the whole fight the perennial fight between good and evil and, and what what the what uh, the actual dimensions of evil are what constitutes evil these are much more interesting questions that make for i think more interesting uh uh, types of horror. Um, I think at the time I, I understood horror in, in a, in a neg I, I, I looked at horror in a negative light because it looked, it seemed like horror movies were mostly about, um, glorifying 
uh, glorifying the horror, you know, and, and people, and just people like would go to these movies just to get off on, on, uh, Ooh, ah, ugh, Oh, the killer's still alive. We think we thought he was dead, but now he's still alive because evil never dies. And that just didn't, that just was kind of a drag to me. It just didn't appeal. Now, what came to in interest me somewhat, however, was not evil just as some, some, uh, you know, killer wearing a hockey mask or, or, or whatever. Um, but evil as, uh, evil in a more, I don't know, sophisticated light. And when I say sophisticated, I don't mean less frightening. I mean, just more, uh, nuanced and complex, you know? Um, and I, I you know, I think that the, the original Star Wars trilogy, you know, in the depiction of Darth Vader and then the later the Emperor, you know, we got a depiction of e evil there in those two characters. Um, even though we didn't know everything about their backstories, um, especially not the Emperor, we didn't really know much about his backstory at all. But I, I think there was still something, you know, very primal and uh, very powerful about both of those characters. Darth Vader being, you know, who we learned was this, this tragic character, even though, you know, he's scary as hell. And he's got this, he's where he, he's this huge hulking uh, creature, you know, half man, half machine, uh, you know, talk about transhumanism, right? You know, wearing this death mask, um, and, you know, force choking people and, and just, you know, just kicking ass left and right. And, you know, not, not somebody you want to mess with. Um, but we later find out that his, his entire, uh, uh, his fall, uh, was, was what, um, you know, set the stage for everything. His fall from grace, his fall from goodness, his, uh, uh, being seduced by the dark side, which was only again implied in the original trilogy and the, in the prequel trilogy, they go into, you see the story and unfortunately it's, they don't, they don't communicate the story as, as well or as powerfully as one would wish. Uh, I say that as someone who does not have prequel hate though, I, I am. I am uh, generally a defender of the prequels, uh, but I don't want to get into Star Wars lore too much here. And maybe to be fair, I don't know. Maybe uh, Freddy was a kind of a more sophisticated uh, evil personage, um, because he he actually had a personality. I I just never watched any of those movies, but I know that uh, you know he, he wasn't just so, he wasn't just a uh, somebody who lumbered around and, and never spoke and just, just killed people. But he, 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 he talked and he made wisecracks and he, he was sort of a, you know, he had more of a personality. So maybe I shouldn't judge, uh, the, the nightmare on Elm street movies as, as harsh, harshly. Although I've come to think that, uh, the creator of those movies had, uh, certain demons, um, which, uh, which, affected his work. Um, and I'm just gonna, that's all I'm gonna say about that right now. I'm not gonna go into any greater detail, but you can investigate it if you want. Let me just also say to make, to make your anti-hero character, to make your, the villain that people rooted for, you know, into like to, to take, to have him be a child molester. Um, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty sus, as the kids would say these days, isn't it? Uh, why would you want to do that? What would what would motivate you to do that as a as an auteur? Uh, one wonders. Well, I'm starting to see this is going to have to be another two parter at least. So, um, because my uh, camera does a thing where it, if if I get too much past 20 minutes, uh, it, it it automatically splits it up into two. So I don't. In any case, I want to keep the episodes kind of bite-sized. Um, so 
what more can I say about uh, my evolving appreciation for horror? Um, I mean, I, I think that, like I said, the examples of of the Emperor and of um, Darth Vader in Star Wars, those are, you know, those, those are it's definitely a horrifying undertone uh, to uh, to the trilogy, to the original trilogy that gives it a certain, uh, depth, even though it's not, a, those are not, these are not horror movies. And I, of course, I hate the Ewoks as much as anyone, you know, of course that undermines the, the, the sense of any sense of menace, any proper sense of menace, uh, those little furry, uh, things. I think it was when I got older and started getting into literature more and, uh, you know, was reading things like Shakespeare um, and if you're know, coming across a villain like Iago, um, in, uh, um, in the play Othello, I blanked on the title for a second, but uh, Iago is the villain in Othello and he's a truly, uh, uh, terrifying, um, uh, creature, you know, do I call him a man? I guess I guess he's a man technically, but he just he's just somebody who who just seems to be getting off on ruining his supposedly best friend's life, you know, making him you know convincing him that his that his faithful wife is is in fact cheating on him, um, and uh, and just you know making all these things orchestrating all these things to happen to him, uh, so that we see Othello just ascend into madness and, uh, become a murderer, you know, become this, this reduced, sorry for the, sorry for the spoilers, but it's a Shakespeare play. I think I can, you can give out spoilers for a Shakespeare play and, and, uh, and not be persecuted, but maybe not. Anyway, um, there's something just, just absolutely devastating about, watching a character like Iago, uh, you know, who, who's masquerading as a nice guy, masquerading as, um, a, a faithful friend, but who's making this good man lose his mind, um, as any one of us would do under the same circumstances and, and, you know, reducing him to this, this making him into a beast which is what he becomes in the end, this murderous beast um, who who kills his wife, his faithful wife, uh, his, his wife who's been faithful all along. Um, and Iago, you know, the way he works on him, um, the subtle psychological um, <clears throat> manner in which he, he, he gets, gets in his mind, gets in his head, um, you know, it's fascinating, but at the same time, this is not a play that I, w that I have a very easy time watching just because I find it very, um, um, uh, unpleasant to see, uh, Iago just go unchecked for so long and fool so many people for so long and, and to see Othello get, you know, get, uh, just get mind fucked the way that he does. Um, it's, it's devastating. It's awful. Um, so, you know, when, when, when you, but, but when you read a, a, a character like Iago, to a lesser extent, and Ed, Edmund in King Lear, who played a similar role of, you know, a man, manipulator of events, someone who convinced good people to do bad things and, and was tr sort of trying, trying to orchestrate events all along. Or a character like Macbeth, um, Who's the main? Who's the main character, and then uh, uh, succumbs to evil, succumbs to the evil from within, you know, because of his ambitions uh, that he wants to become king. He wants to, he wants to uh, rise through the ranks and be the most powerful one, and uh, of course he gets pushed along by, uh, his, his wife. So that's also a pretty, uh, devastating thing, although it's not, it's less painful 
to see because y- you know that Macbeth is kind of responsible. He, he's he's making these choices to become evil, and um, and, and even and so it's 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 still you know uh, uh, it's still disturbing to see him make those kinds of choices. But with with Othello, he was just he just gets ca- caught up in this mind game with this man who he mistakenly thinks is his friend, but is actually, you know, the devil. And, uh, he, he, uh, it's almost like his, uh, uh, what happens to him just is beyond what he can, what any one of us would be able to control under the same circumstances. So it was in Shakespeare, we see this vision of evil that is horror. Uh, I think, uh, links to horror. Uh, that 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 is thematically uh, linked to the genre of horror, because horror is about evil, the evil being unleashed upon the world and the damage that it does to people. Um, so, I still haven't uh, I haven't talked about how all this relates to Franklin Scandal, but I will uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. Talk to y'all soon.